It's Todd Graves with Graves Golf. Yep, we're gonna talk about the grip again. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Well, welcome to the channel today. Listen, I don't know if there's more of a topic that I haven't discussed in my years of teaching the game than the grip. And by the way, I have tons of videos of this on the channel, so if you wanna go back to some of the videos I've produced, I'll even put some links in here to describe my discussions about hand position. What I have in front of me today are a couple of things. This is actually Mo Norman's club that he gave me. It's a wedge, and you can see his grip that's on the club. And then here, I have a large Jumbo Max grip. You can see the, the, the major difference in size between those two grips. And then this is my grip. So this is a larger grip, but now you can see Moe's grip, my grip, and the Jumbo Max grip. So you can see those three grip sizes right there. And you can see that my grip is actually probably a little larger or just about the same size as Moe's grip. Now, the discussion we have to have, there's actually two discussions to have here. One is 10 finger versus overlap. I wanna talk about that. The other discussion I wanna have is the discussion between palm grip and finger grip, and God, it pains me to talk about this anymore. But everybody can, oh, I also wanna talk about baseball grip. Look, let's get something really clear about baseball grip. Baseball players put their thumb on the side of the club. I'm not saying you can't hit a golf ball that way, but when people say Mo had a baseball grip, he never had the thumb on the side of the club. So let's get that out of the, out of the question. The other thing I wanna talk about is function. The hands, how they function in the biomechanics of the swing. Because you may be one of those people that says that you're grabbing it like a baseball or a 10 finger, whatever. Okay, I wanna produce an environment with the grip that helps the club face move correctly. Most of what happens in a golf shot is relative to face angle. So we need to get the face angle correctly on the, on the golf ball, so we need the hand to match the face angle. That's important. And I need to be able to produce speed. That's a function of the wrists and the arms and the body. So we have to get the wrists working correctly. And keep in mind, and I've done a video on this before, the hands are simply clamps. The hands do not move the club. The hands perform, they basically are clamps that hold the club, and now they determine how the wrists can work. In other words, how you clamp the hands determine, can the wrist work this direction? If I had them clamp this, now the wrists have to rotate and work differently. If I had the clamp underneath like this, now it creates a different type of movement of the wrists and the arms because of the way the clamps are placed on the club. So though, I wanna clarify that, that you know, people say grip in the palms like this, we have to clarify what's happening because we want the club to move correctly. We wanna produce the maximum amount of speed and leverage in the club. And we wanna be able to square the face to the ball. So I'll go through this one more time here with, let's just talk about 10 finger versus overlap. I'm gonna do something really quickly. When I set up like this, that's overlap. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my hands 10 finger and I bet you barely see a difference. Do it again, overlap, 10 finger. Overlap, 10 finger. Do it again, overlap, 
10 finger. Overlap, 10 finger. Now, why am I doing that? To show you that there is so little difference between a good overlapping grip and a good 10 finger grip, but here's where people make the mistake. Now, I am an overlapping guy, why? Because when I put the lead hand on there, which I think is extremely important to get this correct, we'll talk about that. When I get this hand on there, this, I want the only lever that matters in this hand, the only one that matters is the longest lever I can make with this, with this particular clamp. That lever goes from this wrist joint to this index finger, because that's where the pressure in that lever is gonna be. That's the pressure in the clamp. So that is the lever. Just like when you throw a rock or skip, throw a rock or skip a ball, or, or actually it'd be throw a ball, skip a rock. But when it, whenever you skip this object here, you can see the, how the lever works. And that's the function of the wrist and how the hand is. So rotation matters because you know you don't want to have to you don't have the the uh, the clamp like this, and you got to rotate the clamp. We're going to place the clamp in a non-rotational position so it can work with the wrist like this. But the thing is, the wrist, that pressure point, that lever, that's like a long wrench, that lever on the end of the hand is important. So it doesn't really matter if I have it here or slightly there. 10 finger, overlap. 10 finger, overlap. Let me tell you what does matter though. When I go from overlap to 10 finger, which didn't change the rotation of the clamps at all, it moves the, the, the it moves the, the wrench, the, the lever, it moves it down, probably about an inch. So I just made this seven iron shorter. Does that make, make sense? Because I effectively made the club shorter. And here we go. Now let's have this conversation. Everybody says, well, Mo with the 10 finger grip hit it shorter. Or, or they'll say, I hit it shorter with a 10 finger grip. Well, it makes sense because if you go from overlapping to 10 finger and you shorten this club by an inch, you've taken a seven iron and made it a nine iron length. You've made a five iron into a seven iron. You've made a driver into a three wood lengthwise. All right? So I'm just clarifying functionality here. This is a function uh, conversation. So that's the, that's the difference between 10 finger and overlap. Do I like them both? I like overlap better. I, I think people unify their hands better. They get their, they get, to me, getting the wrist joints closer together, these two wrist joints closer together is a lot easier to get the hands to work as a unit together so they can perform speed and function on the club better. So I prefer overlapping. And those of you who have trouble overlapping are just doing it incorrectly. You're just, you have pressure in the wrong parts of the hands. I have no pressure on my pinky at all. All the pressure is held in this hand and it's skipping rocks with this hand. So this hand is, is barely on the golf club. It's no pressure. But here's where people run into lots of issues with their trail hand position, is they keep grabbing it and putting pressure on this trail hand. They keep putting so much tension in this hand that yes, you start squeezing the index finger during the golf swing and at other places in the swing. And so yeah, I can see why you have trouble overlapping. You just are simply using this right side of your body, trail side of your body, incorrectly. That's really what's happening in that, in that scenario. But let's go back to the other conversation about grip palm grip. And God, I hate this conversation. I'm so tired of this conversation. Palm, palm, palm. And here it is. I never, in the time, the 10 years I spent with Mo Norman, ever, once, saw him hit a golf ball holding the club in the palms of his hands. Matter of fact, I took videos, I took pictures, I have all types of evidence showing that he never, ever actually held the club in the palms of his hands and hit a golf ball. But what he would do was he would say, hey, yes, I hit it from my palms. He would say that, and then he would go to hit and immediately put it into the proper placement in the hands, proper alignment of the clamps. So we gotta have this discussion about palm grip again. And this discussion is really about losing speed because here's what, here's what people do. They hear that Mo gripped it in the palms, really have no idea what that means. They don't know, they don't understand the importance of how these clamps work and, and making sure they can produce speed and align the face. So they just start grabbing whatever club they have in the palms of the hands, calling it a baseball grip or whatever, and they just start doing this, right? 
and then they run out there and go, oh, uh, Moe's swing doesn't work, it loses speed. There is no reason you should lose speed using the proper Moe Norman single plane swing. The reason you're losing speed is because you're doing it incorrectly. And if you don't know that, send a, here's what I want you to do. If you think that you're doing it correctly and you're losing speed, send a video to my academy and I'll let you do this for free. And I will analyze it for you and show you where you're off. Because your swing, if it matches Mo Norman's swing and you have the right mechanics, you will have plenty of speed and you'll be a better golfer because of it. So let's talk about this thing that everybody keeps confusing as far as palm grip. And again, let me grab this oversized grip. So what's happening is the problem with holding the club in the palm of the hand is you're losing a, you're losing a particular angle. And I can demonstrate it at a couple different places. If I have this club, if I have this shaft in the palm of my hand, let's say this club was as skinny as this shaft. And notice I'm holding it right into the palm of my hand. Look, that is as much angle as I can produce with this particular clamp, this hand. That's as much angle as I can produce. But if I take this shaft and I push it further out, I'm not changing the rotation of my hand, not changing anything. I'm gonna create more angle. Do you see how now I have more angle? So you're seeing, a, I'm changing the position. I'm changing the position of the axis of the shaft relative to my arm and my wrist. I'm changing that axis. So watch it from this angle. So I'm not gonna change the plane of the club. You won't even tell a difference. I'm, I'm not gonna change the plane of the club. Same relationship to my hand, same rotation of my hand. I am simply have more leverage there and I have less leverage there. Okay, didn't change the plane. So the, what changed was where this axis of the shaft sits into my hand. Now let's do it a different place. If I'm holding the club in the palm of my hand, okay, you can see me holding it there in the palm of my hand, I'm gonna move it to the correct spot in the hand. Notice that I'm moving it out towards the fingers. Then I'm gonna put the, the hand on there correctly. So now I have, I have a separation between my palm and the club. It's still in the same plane. I'm not changing, there it is there, there's the correct spot. There it is there, there's the correct spot. I'm not changing the rotation of the hand. I'm changing where the axis of the shaft is relative to the palm. So here's what people do. They get a big grip, grab on the palm. The axis of the shaft is way too close to the wrist. And now they have no leverage. When if the, and I can't seem to pull the axis out far enough because the grip is too big. So now, when I grab the correct size grip and I take it back and you look, I'll take my thumb out of there now you see, it's not sitting in my palm. It's in the fingers. But the fingers are in the proper rotation. And now I can produce what? Speed, because the club now has more angle, which gives it more time and more energy. And I can accumulate more speed because it has more time and a better angle that's produced. So again, here's what we run into. And I'll tell you where people have the problem. And I'm trying not to be too negative on this video about this because I discuss this all the time. Is that if you're grabbing these big grips and holding it in the palm of the hand, there's no place for your thumb. You got the axis of the shaft too close to the wrist joint, and you're basically fighting an open face with, with the hands too close to the palm. Again, let me ask you this question Do you wear the same size shoe as everybody? Do you wear the same size shirt as everybody? And the answer is no. And the reason is because your hands are different sizes. You need custom fit grips. Grips that fit you correctly here to line this up and correctly put this in the correct axis. And now you can produce proper leverage. So what I do with these big grips is I gotta pull that thing away from my palm and I can get away with it, but I'm pulling it out of my palm. I'm putting this grip, I'll end up choking down because it's skinnier. I put this thing, I'll get it out there in my fingers so I can produce that leverage angle. Notice again, the big grip is not in my palm. See, I'm, I'm even taking this big grip and not letting it get into my palm. The problem you're gonna have is when that grip goes in, watch, watch, watch the angle, watch the club, watch the angle lost. The grip goes into my palm. There's my loss of angle. Now I'm gonna take it away from the palm. 
back into the palm. So I don't know if I can say it anymore that big grips are not the answer. Grip size, a grip size that fits your hands correctly is the answer. But more importantly is having the grip functionally align with the arm correctly so it can square and functionally being in the trail hand so you can produce speed in a non-rotational fashion and have it line up on the single plane which of course is nothing more than tilt and rotations of the body having the arms correctly placed and that aligns the club and now you have a single plane hands that can produce speed and square the face. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Hit the bell icon, give me a thumbs up. And again, if we have to, we'll talk about grip again sometime in the future.